Story 1. Update, my fiancé 30 male and 30 female recently got engaged. Our close friend, a 30 male is the opposite of happy. Original post thrown away for obvious reasons. My fiancé Darcy and I recently became engaged after four years together. I could write an entire page about how excited I am. Woo. But fortunately this is not my relationship issue. It did not come as a surprise to our friends and family since we already owned a house and a dog together, but everyone is still overjoyed for us except for one of our closest friends Collins. As for some background information Darcy and I have a core group of friends from where we grew up. Most of them we have known since childhood. We moved away from that core group a few years ago for our jobs, but we were still within a reasonable driving distance of a couple of hours so we still see them all around once a month. However, in the past couple years, Collins has not attended most of the get-togethers with all of her friends when Darcy and I are present. So I began to grow suspicious if he was avoiding us on purpose, since he used to be available for all of our friends' get-togethers, and he did not have any serious job changes or life-altering events that would make him busy all of the sudden. Collins and Darcy would still play online games together and chat via text, so I attributed it to bad timing when we were visiting, and he was simply not available. It still hurt me a bit because Collins and I were good friends growing up. With me even having a crush on him in the middle of school, but nothing ever occurred between us as we got older, I was fine just being friends. He even introduced me to Darcy and encouraged us to go out, so I figured he only viewed me as a friend. Darcy and I eventually started dating, fell in love, the whole shebang. It all seemed fine and dandy. Then, as I said in the last couple of years, Collins began to stop coming to most events where Darcy and I were present. So, I have not actually seen Collins in several months. He has attended a mutual friend's birthday party, we also attended this past winter. And we do not talk at all anymore, although him and Darcy still chat periodically. But according to my fiancé, that communication has also significantly lessened over the past year. Shortly after Darcy and I became engaged, we began reaching out to family and close friends to tell them the news, including Collins. According to my best friend, Collins was with her and her husband at their house when they got the news. And as soon as Collins saw the messages we sent to our friends he stormed out of their house and did not come back for hours. Collins has been living with them as a roommate for the past year. She said that she had no idea what that was about but suggested Darcy reach out to Collins to see what's going on since the last thing we want is tension within our friend group, especially with Collins living with my best friend and her husband. Darcy tried reaching out and asked if Collins was planning to attend a small get-together we're having with her friends to celebrate and the only response he received was Collins saying I'm not around. Nothing to indicate he's even remotely happy for us. To be honest, I do not care if Collins does not want to ever be my friend again since he's already been giving me the cold shoulder for over a year, but it's obviously affecting my fiancé and it hurts me to see him hurt. Part of me wants just to let the two of them work it out if Darcy cares to, and the other part of me wants to send Collins a message that in short says, I do not know what your problem is, but could you please stop being a jerk to my fiancé? Thoughts and opinions? Now for some comments before reading the update. So there's not a lot to do here. Just ignore his childish antics. He's jealous and I don't think it's you he was after. He stopped talking to you first, not your husband. He then stopped talking to your husband, then realized his delusions of love could never actually happen. Just let him have his tantrum. If this causes tension in the group, it's not your fault, it's his fault for being immature and not talking about maybe needing space sooner to move on from whatever feelings for you or your fiancé he had. I not super recently had to cut off a friend who literally would not admit his feelings for me. It wasn't until my current boyfriend and any date before my current boyfriend that I realized he had a problem. He would text bomb my phone when I was on dates when I actually became my boyfriend's girlfriend. It was worse. 
my boyfriend even noticed when it happened because for once my phone wasn't going off every 15 minutes when we spent the day together and the guy just wouldn't admit it and Collins won't admit it either because it's probably some unfortunately long harbored crush that he probably should have been in therapy for for the past four years rather than to set you two up and watch sadly from the sidelines. Another reason I think it's your fiancé he likes and not you. He introduced him to you and not the other way around. I really think he's been trying to hide his feelings for ages and hoping seeing you too. Happy would make him get over it if he knew it obviously wouldn't ever happen. Instead he's cut you off because of jealousy and now that your fiancé proposed there's just no shot for him. This person says he may be jealous or he's just in a shtty place in his life. And this is just another reminder of his life being crappy. Doesn't really excuse him being cold towards you guys, but it could explain it. I'm not cold to my friends, but I'm also in a shtty place, and lately I've been thinking do I even want to meet up with them again this year so I can tell them all the nothing that has changed and how I'm still stagnating and unhappy with everything. If you want to, reach out to him not to confront him about his non-congratulations, but to see if he is alright, and if he wants to talk about anything. Between the androgynous names and me misreading, I was so confused. I thought Op was the male and Darcy was female. So then both Collins and Op are bi, but Op doesn't mind Collins texting and gaming with his girlfriend and fiancé. What is going on? This makes so much more sense once you realize Op is female. And this person says the names are throwing me off about genders, but it sounds to me like Collins is into you. Yes, he encouraged you to date Darcy, but most people don't assume that relationship will be the one that makes it so I bet he figured he'd have a chance with you, and then he realized he missed it and cut you out etc. It happens a lot stop fighting for this friendship. He's made it clearly he is not actually you're engaging with him. Now for the update. Update. Well this past weekend was insightful as to what has been going on with Collins. A close friend of ours Bingley gave us the rundown of why Collins threw a tantrum following the news of our engagement. Turns out Collins is in love with me and has been for years so the engagement was the final thing to push him over the edge and he no longer wants any contact with me or Darcy until he gets over me. He views us as a package deal and associates Darcy with me. This includes not wanting me to contact him, not wanting Darcy to contact him, and not wanting any invites from our friends if there is an event with Darcy and I that would be attending, i.e. including him on group texts that include us. He requests that our mutual friends only reach out to him about parties, game nights, random things, etc. If Darcy and I have been told one of those friends that we will not be in attendance, Collins also claims that he put Darcy's needs above his own because years back before Darcy and I started dating, Collins liked me, but once he found out Darcy liked me too, he allowed Darcy to pursue me. I do not believe that for one second, but at this point it really no longer matters why he has been unable to get over me. Bingley reiterated to us that he told Collins he was just being... An ass and Collins agreed, but said this was how it was going to be until he gets over his feelings for me. Apparently Collins also hopes that once he is over me, he can be friends again with Darcy and I. To which we flat out said no, and said Bingley can relay that back to Collins. The damage is done. Even if he became cordial with us again, we could never trust or respect him. To top it all off, he still plans to live with my best friend and her husband, which flabbergasts me because that significantly increases his odds of seeing me. That and my best friend will now be caught in the middle of this because Collins is also requesting she warn him. Whenever I'm coming over to visit so that he can either leave or go hide in his room. At the end of the whole conversation with Bingley, my reply was simply that Collins should see a therapist aside from officially acknowledging we are no longer going to be friends with him. Darcy is obviously upset that his close friend of 20 plus years can just cast him aside, but he seems to be handling the news okay and keeps asking me questions about our wedding. Edit. It seems people are divided in the comments and some are wondering why I seem to be harboring anger towards him. None of you know him like Darcy and I do, so I would appreciate it if you would not judge the emotions I feel. 
I am, however, angry because he's hurt my fiancé by dropping him like he's worth nothing. He's put some of her closest friends in a tough spot too. No, they do not have to choose sides, but it's kind of selfish to say, if someone hey, I want to be invited to all of your parties, but first you need to make sure so and so are not coming before I will attend, and he is acting a bit like a child by throwing a tantrum and then telling us how he feels through friends. Like seriously, be an adult and tell us how you feel to our faces, even if that means saying something like sorry due to my feelings I cannot be around or talk to either of you. Then at least there may be some respect left and a friendship is possible to salvage in the future. Edit 2. Perhaps I should have given more details about Collins as a person. He has been a good friend to Darcy and me for several years, to the point where Darcy and him called each other brothers. But he can be manipulative at times, where he says or does things to make sure he gets his way. We just put up with it because we could call him out on his BS like Bingley did when he spoke to Collins about this whole situation and, normally we would all move along. It was one of those friendships where you knew he had a dark side, but you knew he had a good side too. Well we focused on the good side. Not once in my entire friendship with Collins have I gotten a whiff of him liking me which is what got to me when he said things like, he allowed Darcy to date me, which it made me feel like he's been fixated on me for a long time and chose to hide that from us in a creepy sort of manner. The whole situation is just bizarre to us, and it made me angry that in our moment of happiness he found a way to turn it into sadness. Story 2 Update I've 28 female lost weight and now I want to divorce my husband 29 male. Original post. We've been married for 5 years and together for 7 years. We also have a 3 year old kid. After having the baby, I struggled a lot with losing the baby weight and adjusting to being a parent. I also had the baby blues at first which was tough. I wasn't really focused on my appearance, and instead I was trying to focus out our new routine and way of life. And then my husband started making these little comments about my body and how I should start working out and wearing makeup again. It made me feel really awful, and I worried that he might start looking elsewhere because we weren't being intimate anymore. He even suggested hiring a nanny so that I could have more time for myself, but I wanted to be there for our baby full time so I turned down the offer. That made him angry and he started acting cold towards me. Months went by without any hugs, kisses, romance or any kind of affection. My self-esteem hit rock bottom. Every time I looked into the mirror, all I saw were the flaws that my husband pointed out. By this point, our son was already two years old and I desperately wanted to win my husband back. I thought if I got into shape again, he would show me love and affection and our marriage would be saved. I craved his attention so much it hurt to see how much things have changed. But you can't force someone to be affectionate. It took matters into my own hands and hired some help. With more free time, I started going to the gym, taking swimming classes, which are amazing for your back by the way, getting my hair and lashes done regularly and eating healthier. And guess what? I've lost a ton of weight and I feel amazing. Suddenly my husband started touching me, kissing me, buying me flowers, and treating me like the complete opposite of how he treated me before. You'd think that would make me feel better, but for some reason it made me feel worse. All I could think about were the hurtful things that he said when I was at my lowest and how cold he was towards me. I get that you can't force attraction, but why couldn't he just hug me or give me a kiss on the cheek when I was overweight? Why couldn't he love me as a human? Being and the mother of his child? When my self-esteem came back, I got really angry at myself for putting up with his behavior for so long. A few days ago, I told him I wanted a divorce because I don't think I can move past how badly he treated me. He apologized and promised to change and prove that he can be better. But honestly, I'm not sure if I can trust him again. What if I gain weight again or have to deal with health issues? Will he treat me like garbage again? I've talked to some friends and family about the whole situation and say that I should give him another chance, while others say I should leave him, so I'm turning to Reddit for some advice. Am I just being upset over this? Do you think it's possible for my husband to change his behavior for the long term, or is a divorce the right move here? Now for some comments. 
Yes, you are justified. I've had huge weight swings in my marriage, and my husband never treated me like SHT when I was heavier. Based on what is he going to change, saying you will is meaningless. Frankly, I wouldn't want to be with someone who treated strangers like that, let alone me. How will you treat your kid if they are overweight? This person says I've been both my lowest weight and my highest weight in my current relationship, and how I look has never had an impact on how my husband treated me. When I was 140 pounds he told me I was SXY and couldn't keep his hands off me. And when I was 220 pounds he told me I was SXY and couldn't keep his hands off me. I have always been attracted to my wife before and after kids. I just can't get enough of her. This person says the only reason for turning to Reddit is if you want support in your decision to divorce. In this case, if you don't have feelings for him or attraction to him anymore, then it may be the right thing to do. How bad was it? There is a spectrum for this kind of thing. Oop says it was really awful. There were days when he didn't even want to look at me or watch a movie together. It was like we were just roommates and whenever I tried to give him a hug or a kiss, he would roll his eyes. And I cried myself to sleep so many nights. This person says, so he tried to help, you said no. Then you got the exact help he offers you before, and that helped, but now you want a divorce. So he tried and you rejected, and you were surprised he was cold and distant. Were you cold and distant too, or just regular you with your baby blues? You both made mistakes grow up and give him another chance. Oh. P says between him offering help and me offering help. There was a big gap of several months we were still getting used to our new routine and our baby had a super sensitive stomach so it was way too early to bring in outside help. Going to the gym was honestly the last thing on my mind. Then later on, when things calmed down and we got into a better routine, I could finally take some time off and focus on myself too. So even though you're right, he offered the same help that I eventually received, the circumstances were different. Now for the update. Update. Thanks a lot for the advice you gave me after my last post. It was really tough to make a decision especially considering our son. So I sat down with my husband and had a conversation about what happened. He kept saying sorry but I asked him if he actually understood why his behavior was hurtful. He just kept saying he was being a jerk but it felt like he didn't really grasp why it was a problem. So I broke it down for him. I told him that saying I still look pregnant three months after giving birth or calling me a mess because of my dark circles, rolling his eyes when I wanted to show affection, not talking to me for days without any reason and not wanting to spend time together were all really hurtful. And on top of that, he didn't offer the help so I could take care of my own mental health. Instead, he wanted me to go to the gym and get in shape. When I reminded him of all of this, he couldn't even look me in the eyes and didn't say a word. The silence in the room was so thick you could cut it with a knife. I just don't think he fully understands how badly he treated me. No amount of extra weight can justify that kind of behavior. I wouldn't treat a stranger like that, let alone someone I love. And for the sake of our son, I still offered him couples counseling. And guess what? He refused. He said he was afraid that the therapist and I would team up against him and make things even worse. We went round and round in circles. After almost three hours of talking, I finally had enough and told him I wanted a divorce. He tried to convince me that he could prove that he could change, but when I asked him how, he just said I have to have faith in him and see it for myself down the line. That's just not good enough for me. I told him I was taking our son to my mom's place for the weekend and that we would discuss everything before finalizing the divorce on Monday. He said okay and we left. But now he won't stop blowing up my phone, begging for a second chance and telling me how much he loves me and how he made a mistake. It's really disheartening to see how much he changed after we had her son. All I ever wanted from him was love, loyalty and respect, but he didn't give me any of that in the past few years. I still wanted to give him a chance, but he doesn't want to put in the work to make things better. If it comes to that, I'll be able to raise her son on my own as I'm financially independent and secure. I also have a lot of help, so I'll be okay. I still want him to be part of her son's life and be the best daddy he can be, 
but I can't be with someone who doesn't love or respect me. I wanted to say thank you all for your support and advice that you've given me. I thought my husband was the person that I would grow old with, but the universe has other plans for me. It will be really hard to let him go, but I'm hoping it's for the better. Story 3 Am I the a-hole for not telling a girl that I was lesbian before inviting her over? I, a 27 female lesbian, am a grad student. There's a girl in my department, Natalia, who I'm not really friends with, but who has on more than one occasion, while tipsy at a party or get-together confided in me about how horribly her boyfriend treats her. During winter break at a uni party, she told me she was scared that he might escalate and that she has nowhere to go because she moved cities for him and didn't know anybody. I gave her my address and told her that even though we don't know each other that well, she can always come crash on my couch if she feels the need, no questions asked, and then I'd help her to the best of my ability. She ended up doing just that this Saturday, showed up with a backpack full of clothes and told me she was scared to go back home. I made her something to eat and sat down with her to try and figure out what steps she wanted to take next. She complimented the food, and I told her I couldn't take the credit because it's my girlfriend's recipe. She asked if I meant girlfriend as in dating. I said yes, and she took her bag and got up said I should have told her I like girls and that she would have never come if she knew that then told me it looks like I'm trying to take advantage of her and that she wouldn't have come if I was a man. So me being a lesbian was the same thing. She left, and I honestly don't really know how to feel about it. She sent me a text afterwards to reiterate that my deception was really messed up and that she felt preyed on. I've never mentioned my girlfriend to her because I never spoke that much to her to begin with. I don't think she even knows my last name. We don't see each other much and the only time that we talk is at parties when she'd seek me out to vent for some reason. Not only am I not interested in her, I have a girlfriend that I've been in a loving relationship with for two years and who I intended to move in with once our leases are up. My girlfriend is on my side, but my best friend kind of agrees with Natalia that I am in the wrong. I don't ever want to make someone feel uncomfortable, so I genuinely like to know if what I did was wrong so I could apologize and never do it again. Am I the a-hole?